Welcome to Voices of the Community, which explores critical issues facing Northern California communities. We introduce you to the voices of community thought leaders and change makers who are working on solutions that face our fellow individual community members, neighborhoods, cities, and our region. This is George Coster, your host. This episode is part of our series exploring COVID-19's impact on nonprofits and small businesses in the San Francisco Bay Area. Back in April of 2020, when we decided to create this ongoing series on COVID-19's impact, first on nonprofits and then on small businesses in the San Francisco Bay Area, we, like you, had no idea how long the pandemic would go on and what the health and economic impact would be in our community. Going into 2021, the pandemic is now killing more people, shutting down more nonprofits and small businesses, along with wiping out the livelihoods of families, neighborhoods, and communities. We will continue to shine a spotlight on the nonprofits and small businesses that make up the fabric of our community, along with the founders and staff who are struggling to deal with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on their operations, services, and sustainability until we can all get to the other side of the pandemic. Along the way, we will also share with you all the amazing solutions that our nonprofits, small businesses, foundations, and government leaders are working on to help us all get to the other side of the pandemic and come together to rebuild our communities with more economic, social, and environmental equality. So to see these young people really step up and say, you know what, art is a profession. It is something that's valuable and that's something that's valued. And you value me as a person who has something to share whose voice matters, and also as a professional, not just as a token or not just as a symbol, but as somebody who you're putting your money where your mouth is and we want you to, to be valued financially for your work. And to see all that come together is rare and very special. This is the Director of Programs, Justin Hoover, and the Chief of Staff, Kareem Zoanka, at Project Arctivism. Throughout our series, we've been featuring arts and culture nonprofits that are working with the community to provide innovative solutions to the COVID-19 pandemic's impact on our economy, health, and sense of community. Project Arctivism is another wonderful example of using art as a vehicle to bring together artists, youth, business, philanthropy, and the public to drive change in our community. I'm joined remotely via Zoom by Justin Hoover, the Director of Programs, and Kareem Zoanka, the Chief of Staff at Project Artivism. Thanks for being here, Justin and Kareem. I'm going to actually turn to Kareem first and have you provide the audience an overview of who is Project Artivism and what are your key programs. Yeah, absolutely. We're really happy to be here, George. Thank you for inviting us onto your show. Project Artivism is a nonprofit organization based out of San Francisco, and we are a arts organization in many ways, but what we aim to accomplish through our work with artists and the arts world in general is to strengthen communities through the promotion of healthy urban living, public art programs that create opportunities for artists to continue working in the Bay Area, and also opportunities for residents of San Francisco to engage directly with public art programs. And so we started out in 2014. And since then, we've worked on a variety of projects in the city. And most recently, we've had the opportunity to expand a lot of our work outwards. But I think, you know, Project Artivism is really, it's born out of the idea that artists and the work they do can have really consequential impacts on urban living and livelihoods in general. So we really believe that. And the format through which we work through really empowers communities to develop positively. And so we work really hard to try and make that happen. Thank you. I'm going to turn to you, Justin, and have you do a little bit of deep dive into each of the programs. So Restore 49 is one of the programs, Arctivate, and then Unused Spaces, and then Public Hotspots. And as we were talking about before we came on, some of the programs like Public Hotspots and Unused are similar into Mothball for the moment because of COVID. But please walk the audience through Restore 49, because I feel like that's a really wonderful program that you guys have kind of created to help the community you know, somewhat heal through arts especially around vacant space, et cetera. So, Justin? Great. Thank you so much, George and Kareem. George, great questions. We're excited to be here. Project Artivism is a wonderful nonprofit in San Francisco doing all it can to bring opportunities for sharing information, for co-creation, for participatory 
art making for safe and healthy communities and accessible streets. And yeah, we have, as you said, put a couple programs old and we're focusing right now on Restore 49. And they are linked in some ways, both are on the street, both are accessible to all citizens who are walking around San Francisco and both seek to link businesses and artists and individuals and communities together. Restore 49, uh, it's an arts program that works with businesses and artists to create meals on boarded up storefronts. And within that program, we also selected a group of sites to be basically test sites, a pilot site program for Artivate Public Art Now, which is our program for young artists to work in mentorship relationships with established artists in like mentor, mentee, small pods and groups like that. And they work with community groups development corporations, real estate companies, neighborhood associations. We use a lot of Zoom. We do a lot of classes in which young people get to talk to people in the community and then co-create with either ideas that are shared during these interview sessions or even sometimes just hands-on together with the community by creating murals and creating posters and public artwork in public spaces. So there's a lot of really rich content that's developed by our artists and with our communities and in partnership with our artists and the people who intersect our programs and yeah, it's really exciting to see such, you know, dynamic young people and established artists and really intergenerational folks, you know, working together to create work in public spaces. So to Restore 49, as I understand it, is really you're trying to match up small business owners or could be larger business owners. I noticed some of the murals are on chains, for example, you know, chain stores that have been boarded up. So if I'm a small business owner or I'm an artist, how would I get engaged in Restore 49? That's a fantastic question. We do work with businesses of all sizes. We would love to work with large corporations and small mom and pop stores. Basically, you can just reach out to us. You can go to projectartivism.org and you can contact us through that portal. And you can sign up for a newsletter or reach out and email us directly. Basically, we work with groups to either put up boards and we supply the boards or we can work with you to work with your site and it doesn't even need to be on boards that are boarded up in the storefronts. You know, during COVID-19, we saw all of this crazy boarding up of storefronts because people were afraid of looting and riots and that kind of stuff. But, you know, as we move further into COVID, you know, things are stabilizing and people are getting the vaccines now. So those boards are less useful. But, you know, we are doing more work now doing murals on parklets, for example. And we've done a number of permanent murals on walls also. So Walgreens, for example, had a giant wall that they wanted a mural on. We worked with their team as well as our artists and our youth to do a project where we created a site-specific mural according to their desires and the interests of our community and our members. So, you know, anybody can be part of it. What we need is just a willingness to collaborate with us and an interest in the arts and community and to reach out to us. And we're happy to work with you on this. We raise a lot of money on our own, but we also like to ask communities to also bring something to the table, but that's not a requirement. What's most important is that there's an interest in community and a dedication of support. So have a space that you want to be activated through the arts. And that's, you know, the biggest hurdle there to overcome with working with somebody. And, you know, some people say, oh, well, chain stores are bad. And yeah, I think that they can lose some of the local flavor. So we work with all sorts of companies. You know, we work with neighborhood associations, which are trying to really support the small businesses, the mom and pop stores. You know, so we work with a bunch of liquor stores. We work with a bunch of restaurants and clothing stores. And there's also the larger corporations, you know, so CVS and Walgreens and that kind of corporation, you know, they have a lot of real estate. They have money to support and we're not going to turn them away. You know, it's still a part of the fabric of our neighborhood. So, uh, yeah, I think also if you are an artist, you can reach out to us and be in touch. Let us know you're making work and that we could be in touch about your work down the line. And Justin, just to stand there for a moment, here you have a program that you've kind of created to help respond to COVID-19, but then how does COVID-19 really impacted you know, Project Artivism's uh, operation? Because a lot of it is, you know, people working with people to make art. Yeah. Well, so the days of having hands-on participatory classrooms where people can drop in to make some art, those are gone right now, of course. So the way we're organizing it is that we do mostly Zooms with our community groups, Zoom meetings to do interviews and stuff like that. And then our young artists or our lead artists or our, you know, our artists that are you know, in the Restore 49 program just go and execute their murals. 
and they're outdoors. So they're easy for people to do. It's about as easy as you can get right now, you know, being outdoors. And uh, yeah, it's really important for the artist, you know, to maintain working, to stay busy. And, you know, we saw a lot of artists that we were talking to saying, gosh, I don't have a gallery show. My museum show's on hold. The commission I was going to do for the corporation that I was working with, you know, that got canceled because the corporation lost their money, whatever. So we saw just a lot of impact to artists locally. People are losing their opportunities in the arts, but also just challenges for life. You know, a lot of people lost their sources of income outside of the art world. A lot of artists balance professional work and career with a career in something else. Maybe they wait tables and that's closed, or maybe they work for another art center that's closed. You know, a lot of artists work at the museum as ticket takers or installers or restorers or whatever. So there's the whole ecosystem that's been suffering because of the closures of COVID-19. So Project Artivism and Restore 49 is really doing its part to get money back in the hands of artists and to do it in a way that also supports the businesses. So that a business can use it as a leverage point saying, oh, look, we're open. We're doing this great thing. Look, we show this great artist on the facade, you know, come by, pick up a meal to go, buy, uh, you know, some new clothes at our store online and pick it up. But at the same time, you can be checking out this artist and you can support the work of both our work, our company and this artist. You know, it's a tough time. It's complicated. Everything's closed. The economy is really in a strange place. Of course, you still see a lot of big money moving to the economy, but locally, you know, a lot of artists are impacted by this. So we're trying our best to recruit companies that want to help support the artists in this way, help support communities, and also recruit funders to help us continue getting money in the pockets of artists and community members. Kareem, turning to you, so how many of the art projects have you guys actually finished? I think on the website I was noticing is around 50, but I have a feeling that's old information. And then if you could also kind of segue into how has COVID impacted public hotspots, for example, in unused space? Yeah, thanks, George. As part of Resource 49, we've painted over 50 murals in San Francisco. And so we've worked with well over 50 artists because some of our murals were worked on by multiple artists to bring different visions to especially some of the larger scale ones. Traveling through San Francisco, different neighborhoods, you might see murals that take up, you know, a whole facade of a Walgreens location. And so that required a lot of extra work. So uh, we've painted over 50 murals, worked with several artists. And then as part of the Art of Eight program, we've worked with over 20 high school students, artists who applied to participate in a program that supplemented our mural making efforts in San Francisco. But they also worked on other public art projects, such as silk screening, poster making, printmaking that allowed them to learn from professional artists and then manifest what they learned and their vision of what they wanted to see in San Francisco, response to certain social justice issues into physical artwork. So a lot of that came in the form of posters. Some of it came in the form of celebrating the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, with the Spanish-speaking Unity Council. And so Murals were about 50, but then other projects as part of Art of Eight were close to about 70 distinct projects that have taken place in San Francisco since the start of COVID. And so we've really had a, a huge opportunity here to work with both professional artists, young artists, business owners, community associations to really enliven San Francisco, beautify parts of San Francisco and bring a lot of color to the city in a difficult time. It has affected our other programs, unfortunately, in a way that we're unable at the moment to safely curate unused spaces, which is a program that repurposes vacant homes, businesses, storefronts in San Francisco. And it required a lot of collaboration that just isn't possible at the moment. Then hotspots is something that we are trying to rethink as a public safety law enforcement alternative. And it comes in the form of musicians playing music in certain scenarios or situations where otherwise we might need law enforcement present. As an example, before COVID, we were working with the displaced population, so homeless persons, transient individuals, and social service organizations providing them with services. And so we would work with musicians, send them to those locations where social service organizations were serving these populations, and really creating a more lively atmosphere that allowed both the people working and the beneficiaries to feel more at ease and more safe. And again, with COVID in place right now, we're unable to be a part of 
large gatherings of people for the safety of the musicians and everyone else involved. So we've had to shelve those programs for the moment, but we've also just been able to work with a huge array of artists and students on these two other newer programs, Resource 49 and Art of it. And I'd like to add a little bit to that, George, too, if you don't mind. You know, all these programs are really important to us. And even though they're mothballed, as you said, or shelved, it's not because we don't want to work on them. It's just because the context right now isn't allowing it, you know, state rules and regulations. You know, so we are doing small pods for our program right now because that's legal and it's safe. And our priority is healthy and safety, you know, for the community. So we don't want to have a situation in which some of our students might be a vector of this, you know, so it it fits that the mentorship system of learning, right? So you have one teacher with like one or two younger artists lends itself nice to this. And we had wanted to do that kind of relationship anyway. So this kind of system of engagement really makes a lot of sense today. So we're holding onto it and just taking it. So our Art of Eight program is really doing these little pods according to how the protocol on safety and schooling can happen right now. In the future, we have a lot of big plans. We want to have a physical brick and mortar site where we have a learning center and an engagement center and a display place, you know, so whether that looks like a museum or a gallery or a classroom or, you know, we don't know what it'll look like, but we know that there is a nexus there that will be available in the future that we're going to be taking part in. That means people gathering. It means educational opportunities. It means hands-on situations and face-to-face opportunities, you know, and all within one space while we're also doing our outreach and engagement in the community with community groups out in the world, you know. So we see Project Artivism as, you know, infiltrating uh, a wide variety of systems in the city being, you know, like public space, educational partnerships, retail engagement, you know, working with businesses and that kind of thing, but also having like a site where we could call it home where you could come and have like recurring events that you're used to, artist talks, that kind of thing. But, you know, right now we're focusing on the Restore 49 and Artivate Public Art now. They just work right now, you know, but we're really interested in, like Kareem said, working with the other marginalized communities, making sure that San Francisco, you know, we're dealing with all residents of San Francisco challenged, you know, by home ownership or rental or not. You know, with our music program, there's a lot of potential there for bringing buskers and music opportunities to the public and public spaces. So when we're able to really get out there and do this again without harming anybody, without the potential of of health risks, that's going to come back online too. Thank you. That's great. And I noticed you guys are working with my old friends at uh, Lava May who were episode three on the show. So I'm going to segue over to asking each of you if you could share one of your favorite moments of working at Project Artivism and what you feel has been the impact on the arts and artists in uh, San Francisco. Do you want to start first, Corey? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, at the very beginning of this, we were faced with the COVID-19 pandemic and the, the limitations it placed on our operations, we were forced to kind of think in a grassroots way of how we were going to help our artists and help the city of San Francisco and what we could do to do that. And so for me, my favorite memory of, you know, getting this all started was that we settled on the idea that what we could do was public art. And we understood that there would be a greater appreciation for what public art would bring to the city when everyone is cooped up inside. And so Once we settled on murals as that main messaging platform for how we would engage our artists with work in the city, I just had amazing conversations with business owners in this grassroots format of reaching out to them because before they knew what we were doing and people started emailing us and asking for work, we really had to go out there and build a connection with business owners and community associations, neighborhood associations. And for me, I think part of the magic of this program was being able to connect with these people hear their stories, hear what they were facing as a challenge, and then finding a way that artists and artwork could really substantially improve their situation. And I think just that connection, that moment of saying, hey, did you know that we could help you with the challenges you're facing? Even if your restaurant is closed, we can still make it look beautiful and encourage people to come by and check in when you're open again. So I think I've just loved the connection part of it and being able to help people that have been affected with this. And Justin, how about you? Yeah, there are a lot of moments that I think back that really resonated with me. You know, there's just amazing conversations had with uh, local business owners when we're able to bring them a ray of sunshine in the form of this artwork. And, you know, it's been something really special to see 
you know, there have been some lootings and stuff. So they had to put boards up because of the requirement to keep their place safe. So I've had some conversation with folks saying, oh my God, you know, I was so depressed when I had to, you know, put my boards up because my cashier register got stolen or whatever. But, you know, this really makes it so much better that we can have a beautiful thing here that draws people in and I can also be safe. You know, and that was sad to hear that that was a requirement, but that's the truth of it. And, you know, that was less common of a relationship, but that was amazing to hear that people felt so, you know, happy and honored to receive an artwork like that. But really, I think the experience that resonated most with me was working with these young people in, in new ways and with their kind of mentor artists and just seeing what it meant to realize a large scale public artwork, right? So we made a couple murals that are really quite large and to see young people, you know, 16 years old, 15 year old young men of color, you know, saying, this is what's important to me. And I want to be able to get it out there and say it to the world and share it. So a young African-American lady creating a self-portrait mural that says Black Lives Matters and working with a number of other artists on it, on the street, you know, getting their face up there, painting it on the wall, making it really look like them and showing that who matters to them is, you know, people of color, people who are creative and that this you know, has a sense of self-actualization and empowerment. And uh, to me, that was the most resonant thing was how these young people are able to take this opportunity and take from start to finish the design, implementation, execution of a large-scale public mural. And to do so as a professional, all of our young people are paid a stipend to participate. And we treat them as a mentee is like a student where you just learn something. If you don't get it, you don't get it. No, they're like employees in a way. You got to prove that you can do it. So we have milestones that got to hit, you know, and they, we hold them to a high standard so that when they're done, it's a high quality work of art and it has meaning to them and the community. So to see these young people really step up and say, you know what? Art is a profession. It is something that's valuable and that's something that's valued. And you value me as a person who has something to share, whose voice matters, and also as a professional not just as a token or not just as a symbol, but as somebody who you're putting your money where your mouth is and we want you to, to be valued financially for your work. And to see all that come together is rare and very special. Thank you. Both really good stories. Kareem, how can people who are watching or listening to this actually support Project Artivism? Yeah, absolutely. So on our website, projectartivism.org, we have a donate section where your contributions support our efforts to lead programs for artists and programs that benefit the city of San Francisco. And so every donation that comes in allows us to teach a student, to support an artist, to bring beautiful artwork into the city in a time where it's needed most. And so by visiting projectartivism.org, following us on Instagram or Facebook at Project Artivism, you'll quickly see how impactful the work we're doing is. And it's something that we plan to continue doing. Starting in March, we have a new semester of Artivate coming up. Over 20 high school artists are going to be working for several months with lead artists, with various organizations, various parts of the city, and your donations make that happen. And it inspires a future generation to really become artists and share their vision with the city of San Francisco. That was great. And final question for each of you. So start with you, Justin, what would you say are some of the positive things that could come out of the crisis to support artists and arts engagement, along with youth and families in art education and and mentorship? Uh, Oh, great question. Coming out of the crisis, I see a renewed effort for community focus. I know this is a personal story. I had my focus really international before the crisis. I was working as a curator and an advisor in a program, along with Project Artivism, but I was also doing a lot of consulting internationally. I was always told and I believed strongly that the global work was important, but the crisis has brought me home in a new way. I've always lived in the Bay Area, I've always worked in the Bay Area, but my focus now for the last you know, year almost has been 100% on the Bay Area. People here working here for the people here. And I think that that's shared by a lot of people. There's a new sense of home, There's a new sense of community. I think a lot of people have left the city and it's a changing city in a lot of ways. And so I think that, you know, we're looking more closely now to our own communities in a way and saying, you know, what is the impact of arts today on this hyper-local focus? 
the, what is the impact of arts in this six block area of San Francisco, for example? You know, my, I've seen business districts this active in identifying opportunities for artists. So what I see is with this renewed focus on being local is really a renewed focus on placemaking through the arts. And I'm looking forward to working with Artivism into the Future and with other organizations and artists and just community groups to really put an effort there into intergenerational, intercultural, and um, just transcultural placemaking. How can we make a space that's welcoming and inviting a place of dialogue and a place of participation in the cities where we live and work? I was just going to add that I think that, you know, one of the amazing outcomes from our programs and what we've seen in the city of San Francisco is this conversation around essential work and essential workers. And the outcomes from this is, I think, a real emphasis on how artists and people working on these projects are essential workers for cities all over the world. And that what the city and other organizations and partners can do is to really see these artists as professionals in their respective fields. And so I think that we're seeing that a lot of benefits are coming out from that professionalization of the arts world and artists that I think may have been taken for granted a little bit before and seen as more of a leisure activity and their work being part of more culture and leisure. And now we're seeing that through our programs and programs of other organizations, that there's really this emphasis that these are essential services that artists are providing for business owners, communities, and people, students, anyone really you can think of. It's, it's really important work. I want to thank both of you for all of the work and sharing your work with Project Arctivism today. And we're going to make sure that listeners and viewers have your contact information, website, and social media so they can follow Project Arctivism's work and all the work you guys do to bring together the community during COVID-19 and hopefully get engaged to support your work. It doesn't sound like anyone can at this point volunteer, given to Justin's point, you've created pods, but they can support you through donations. There are definitely ways that we can include other people. We have a ton of voluntary opportunities that include social media support, outreach support. You know, we're not doing live events right now, but there are other ways to be part. So if anybody wants to be part in donating their time or their effort or their finances, definitely visit projectartivism.org. And we would love to include you in our mailing list or you could sign up for updates on our newsletters. Great. Thanks, Kareem. And thanks, Justin. Stay safe out there in our strange new normal. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's it for this episode of Voices of the Community. You've been listening to the voices of Justin Hoover, the Director of Programs, and Kareem Sawanka, the Chief of Staff of Project Arctivism. To find out more about Project Arctivism's Restore 49 and Artivate Public Art Now programs, and to get engaged as a volunteer, artist, mentor, and business that would like to host an art project, please go to projectartivism.org. We hope you'll tune in to next week's show. We'll be featuring a panel discussion with our friends at Civic Makers on COVID-19's impact on our local government. In our ongoing efforts to share the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on both our small business and nonprofit organizations, we're always looking for research and data on the financial impact. In episode 35 with Randy and Allison from Intersection for the Arts, we shared with you the size of the arts and cultural economy from a 2019 Otis College of Arts and Design report. Otis College just published a 2021 report on COVID-19's impact on the creative economy and the state of California. Here are some of the summary findings from the report. Between February and December 2020, Total job loss in the creative economy hit 13.3% across California, compared to just 8.3% nationwide and 23.5% in Los Angeles County. Statewide, over 175,000 jobs were lost in the creative economy. The total jobs impact of direct, indirect, and induced was over 507,000 jobs lost. The total labor income loss was $47 billion dollars and over $140 billion was lost in creative economy output across California. Californians for the Arts just published their latest survey on the COVID-19 economic impact on the arts, which showed that 79% of respondents have discontinued or reduced programs, and 16% are not sure if they can survive if programs do not resume before April 1st. The other big finding is that the state of California presently doesn't have a plan to reopen the arts and culture economy. 
To read both reports, please go to georgecoster.com, click on Voices of the Community, and click on our resources page. Inspired by the Great Depression's Work Progress Administration, also known as the WPA, State Senator Ben Allen said he is working to implement a statewide creative corps that would fund artists whose work deals with the pandemic. The Creative Corps pilot could be funded through a proposal by California Governor Gavin Newsom to allocate $5 million for the pilot in the 2020-2021 budget and $10 million in the 2021-2022 budget. Please tune in to next week's show. We will be featuring a panel discussion with our friends at Civic Makers on COVID-19's impact on our local government. We hope that you enjoyed the insights, points of view, and personal stories from the voices of changemakers and their nonprofits and small businesses featured in this series. To find out more and get engaged with the nonprofits, small businesses, and staff members featured in the series, please go to my website, georgecoster.com, and click on Voices of the Community to find links to the extended versions of these interviews and to listen to the entire series. After listening to these stories, we hope that you will consider making a donation and volunteering to provide a hand up to your fellow community members. I want to thank my associate producer, Eric Estrada, and Casey Nance at Citron Studios, along with the wonderful crew at the San Francisco Public Press and KSFP. Voices of the Community is a member of Intersection for the Arts, which allows us to offer you a tax deduction for your contributions please go to georgecoster.com and click on the donate link to make a donation to help us provide future shows just like this one. While you're on our website, you can enjoy our archived past shows, which feature community voices working on solutions to critical issues facing Northern California communities. And you can sign up for our newsletter to find out more about future shows, as well as shows and events from the organizations that are included in our episodes. Take us along on your next COVID walk by subscribing to Voices of the Community on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and Google Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. You can follow us on Twitter, at George Coster, and we'd love to hear from you with feedback and show ideas, so send us an email to george at georgecoster.com. I'm George Coster in San Francisco, and thank you for listening.